printing money is bad, mm -hmm. right? It's inflationary. Mm -hmm. uh, but borrowing printed money is insane. <laughs> From Patrick in East China, Michigan, would you do a real world of money, um, talk to us like we're a golden retriever, a review of how we got put on the vinyl and not the couch of the Constitution? You want, ah. you want to do that? Yeah, quickly, because it doesn't take long. I, don't, really? Yeah, it was a simple enough thing. Really? Yeah. Okay, now tell folks what, what Patrick is talking about first. <clears throat> well, you, you, <laughs> the <laughs> District of Columbia has the legislative authority in all cases whatsoever uh, without regard to the Constitution. So in a nutshell, mm -hmm. they can put stuff into the rules and laws of the District of Columbia that don't relate or don't pay any homage to the Constitution. So let's just Give say... Give us an could, idea. Give us Well, a... they could do things that are unconstitutional. Good for them. Uh, you mean the White House? Yeah, well, within the forum. So if you are a U.S. citizen, right. then you're saying that you're subject to the District of Columbia as your government, Right. No, if no, I, I'm, 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 I'm a citizen of the 50 United States. No, well, then you're something different. Okay. Of the, you, <laughs> but if you're a U.S. citizen, <laughs> right. uh, then you are subject to the jurisdiction of the District of Columbia. And what, how, how did that happen? Well, that happened with the Social Security Act. Ah, good for them. Because in order to get Social Security, hmm. you have to get a Social Security number. Yes, and if you have a number, huh. well, then you're clearly subject to the jurisdiction of the federal district government. Federal district government? Is that different than the federal government government? Yes, oh. it is different. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, we had two governments, really. We had the national government, which mm. was for everyone. Yeah. And it was subject to very strict rules yeah. that were... Um, enumerated in the Constitution what they could and could not do. Hmm, that's the one I want. That's the one you really want. Yeah, but then they have the other one. Oh, they have another one. <laughs> where <laughs> they have the right to legislate in all cases whatsoever, and that's the district government. Hmm. Well, the did district government... Did they tell us about that when they did that? Well, no, they didn't. Oh. That's why the attorneys argue that you can sue and for constructive fraud. But in a nutshell, mm. the, the district government was limited to the District of Columbia and any areas that the state might cede to them. And the Constitution essentially said, you, the district government, can do whatever you want within the district, Constitution notwithstanding. So no one in your district can say to you, oh, that's unconstitutional, because that's your district. The District of Columbia. Are we right. clear on that? Uh, no, I lost you. Oh, Sorry, man. and I'm pretty good at this, but I did lose you there. So wait a minute. So The Constitution created a separate jurisdiction for the Federal District of Columbia. The Constitution did? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What did they do that for? Uh, so that they could have an, an area, an enclave, uh, that uh, that they were in which they were allowed to legislate in all cases exclusively. All right. And that's what they gave But them. only for the people who live there. But only for that 10-mile square okay. district. I'm yeah. with you. Okay, I'm with you. Well, the federal government thought that was such a great idea yeah. that they found a way to extend that jurisdiction throughout the United States. How'd they do that? By Social Security. <laughs> what year was that? 1934. 1934. So they require everyone to get a Social Security they number. They don't really require... Well, well they, they, do. they don't. They kind of do, but they, they don't. They kind of okay. don't. It's You're a right. yes-no, maybe. It's right? not a law. But everybody you gets can, one. Yeah. yeah, you can do what you want there. Okay. Uh, you can try to live without a Social Security number, but they do make it exceedingly difficult. Yeah. But since once you were sort of tied into the District of Columbia, then that put a layer between you and the Constitution. I hate it when that, that happens. And that layer is the District of Columbia. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're subject to their jurisdiction, mm -hmm. you can't claim constitutional rights. I'll give you a perfect Oh, thing. wait a minute. You know? They didn't tell us about that <laughs> when I was 50, 12 years old and got well, my you, Social Security card to do a paper right. route. I mean, they didn't that's tell me about right. that. Okay. That's right. All right. When you look at the, uh, when you look at the Constitution yeah. and you find that area about... Um, um, uh, no tr a trial by jury, yeah. right? Yeah. Any matter, uh, controversy, a common law exceeding $20. That's right. A trial by jury, you know, is guaranteed according mm -hmm. to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. 
However, mm -hmm. you go into some municipal courtrooms where you're being charged with uh, a crime that will certainly make you pay more than twenty dollars if you're found guilty. There's no jury. So are you I mean, mean like seatbelt violation or whatever? Yeah, or whatever. Pick your minorest crime you want and ask yourself how many of those are uh, done by a judge in a black robe without a jury. Okay. Clear even, violation. Even if your people request it. That's right. They just say, well, no. You can't request a jury trial. Oh, There's no jury box. There's no jury. And, as, uh, and that, that is circumvented by the fact that th this... Uh, well, you're sitting on the plastic. You're, you're sitting not, on the plastic and not right. on the constitutional that's right. couch. That's, that's right. what the, the metaphor you've used with. We're not really on the couch, the organic right. couch, which is organic cotton and no chemicals. And it's really... <laughs> <our> <laughs> and it's got the Constitution right. But we're on a piece of plastic. That's right, yeah. Because uh, we're U.S. citizens. That's it. And how did we get to be U.S.? Oh, because we got a, a Social Security number? Yeah, that and the Civil War, obviously. Oh, the, wait a minute. I wasn't around the Civil War. What's no, that? No, well, none of us were, right? But right. but Mr. Trump caught heat yesterday because he said something yeah. like, uh, if Andrew Jackson were around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, and everybody's saying, wow, what, how did Jackson have anything to do with the Civil War? He was dead for 16 years before it started. Well, John C. Calhoun and the nullification concept, that, that is clearly from the age of Jackson. And it was a tariff that the federal government wanted to impose. And South Carolina specifically said, no, we, well, we, don't, don't, we don't want this tariff. So they nullified uh, the federal legislation. And so this crisis of states' rights broke out where, you know, essentially the, the people of the state were saying, your federal government has no right to make this legislation in our district mm -hmm. because we're a state in, in distinct and of ourselves, and you don't have the right to legislate here. And that was the crisis that Andrew Jackson um, worked out, where they didn't go to war. They certainly could have. South Carolina, that was the beginning, in my view, of the Civil War, in which the South, and South Carolina specifically, said... You don't have a right to tell us what to do in South Carolina. And Jackson backed down. And as a result, the skirmish over states' rights that came to be known as the Civil War hmm. never occurred. Well, when I was, when I was a kid, they tell me the civil rights was about slavery. But let's not go there. No. Yeah. Okay. So not until the second term right. did Abraham Lincoln invoke slavery as the reason for going to war. So... So back to the plastic and the couch. So if you get a Social Security number, yep, and if you... Um, That's else? an adhesion contract. Adhesion. You're clearly uh, now in the District of Columbia. You, you have a, a Social Security number. You're in the District of Columbia, and you have to abide by the laws and regulations of the District of Columbia, Constitution notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. And that's the key, Constitution notwithstanding. Mm -hmm. Because the Constitution does not apply, then um, obviously all of the constitutional protections don't want to, don't apply. So that's how you get onto the plastic by getting into an adhesion contract with the federal district government and declaring yourself a U.S. citizen. Well, then clearly your your rights are not derived from the Bill of Rights, but from the Civil Rights Act, and you're. A slave, I don't want to call it that. But You're a subject citizen more than a sovereign citizen. So all the kind of patriot websites out there, and I certainly spent in my past studying some of this stuff and took course. I even took a year-long course from a, an attorney about how the federal government years ago, I don't know, 2008 or seven, something like that, was not, I wasn't in the United States, right? I was in Texas, right? Correct. Correct. So he was theoretically right, but I, something I've learned from you over just in the recent couple of years, he didn't, he, these people don't understand that you're not on the couch. Correct. Correct? Yeah. So they teach this stuff. As if you were. As, as if you were on the organic couch. Right. And then the judge essentially looks at the case and says, oh, you have a social security number? Oh, you have a bank account? Uh, oh. So you, you mean a bank account and all these things are adhesion contracts? Yes. Uh, driver's license? Yes. Um, passport? Yes. Mm, what else? Well, 
Man, you're Fannie, in. Like, you're, on, yeah. you're on the plastic. A mortgage. <laughs> really? The Fannie Mae mortgage. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's so you're, many you're, ways you're, you're that you brought. You're plasticized, dude, right? Yeah, you're in the forum. Now, granted, yeah. you can separate yourself, as many have done. Really? But it's just not easy. It's not like it's a piece of cake, like you can fill out a few forms and you're done. And I've followed the same course of study. I know you did over You know, years. for 40 years. You know this stuff. Yeah. Right. And uh, it, to me, at the end, it dis- I, I decided you'd be better off to understand the system mm-hmm. and use it to your advantage, yeah. what little they provide for you. Because if you want to be a renegade and say, well, I'm not a U.S. citizen, I'm not going to pay an income tax, you're not going to legislate for me, and none of your federal laws apply. You, you spend no your whole life doing that, right? You'll be spending your whole life fighting. Yeah. Right. And you won't be able to enjoy any of the benefits, see, because that is the other thing. So, so they allow advice, you to yeah, they allow you to monetize debt and buy a house. They allow you to oh. participate in open equity markets. Uh, they allow you to have uh, bank accounts and transfer wealth through Federal Reserve notes, which all by themselves put you in the jurisdiction. So if you're if you're on the couch, you're kind of growing food organically and dealing in cash and. Yeah, and 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 not have a bank account, not have right. a driver's license, and, right? And you're just kind of uh, like uh, off the grid. Yes, as they call it. But, yeah. Then you can take that that um, uh, what shall we call it? The radical stance. Radical stance. And you can defend it. But if you if you're, you're in, in, if you're in, you're if in. you're in, don't try to act like you're out because now you're you're going to find yourself at the short end of that stick and it's not a pleasant one to fight uh-huh. so you got like one foot in one foot out yeah no good you're either in or you're in or you're yeah in or out you're or either in or you're out don't try to be in the middle uh-huh. so if you really want to be a radical hippie and not have your kid do any of this stuff and live out in the country well first thing you th- need to do constitutionally is learn. or legally yeah could you do it yes you but you have to learn why it is yeah, yeah. you'd have to really know your stuff yeah if you and then you know yeah what would the kid yeah. do his whole life or her whole life? Right. Well, you could uh, grow food. That wouldn't, that wouldn't be terrible. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 